Hi everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Today I'm wearing Karina Anna's capelet that she made me, and the rooster that I got from her. Yep. Yep. I hope she's doing well. I haven't heard from Karina Anna in a while, and she hasn't put out a video in a while, so I don't know how she's doing. But it would be interesting to find out. I um, have a couple more questions that were asked of me to answer, and I will answer them in this video. And one of them was from AJ, which is AJ's Green Topics. He wanted to know how did I learn sign language? Well, a long time ago, a long, long time ago. <laughs> Very long. Very long time ago. In 1982, we had our first foster child, and the young man was really delayed. In fact, they used to use a, a word that they don't use now, and I won't say it, but um, it, the letters would be MR, is what they diagnosed him with. And he went to a special school, and he was trying to tell me one day what he wanted to eat. And I kept saying, what? What are you saying? And finally he went, and I go, hamburger? Is that what you're saying? And he goes, and then it sounded like hamburger when he said it, and he told me, yes, it was. So he wanted a hamburger, and he wanted french fries, and then he wanted soda pop. And I said, no soda pop. Uh-uh. No, no, no. Because <laughs> we don't drink pop here. We have milk. And so he had to have milk instead. But he did get his hamburger and french fries. And that's when I learned that he could sign, but I had already taken a class for signing. I had taken, actually I took two classes prior to this, and then I took a third one, and the third one was where there was absolutely no talking in it. You had to sign everything, and so my, my whatever I said was real short and to the point. I didn't elaborate, because I only knew just so many words. Then, when I was in 1990, I actually lost my voice completely to where I went to an ear, nose, throat specialist, and they put a, a probe down my throat, and he said that my vocal cords were extremely fine, and he wanted me to go to a tropical island and rest for six months and don't talk, because he didn't think I would ever sing again, and I would never talk again. I couldn't do that, so I came back home, and I started teaching the rest of the family the sign language, and my daycare kids had to learn signing, and so what I did is I would whistle to get their attention, because you couldn't get their attention otherwise, and when I whistled, they'd all look, and then I'd sign to whatever it was I wanted to tell them. Little things they, I had to tell the kids, there, or your, your mama's here, you're going to go home, and so they would go home. The other question was from Patty, Life with Patty. She was asking me, why are the yolks darker for my hens, or any hens that are free-ranged, than the yolks in the store eggs? Well, the eggs in the store, first of all, are usually pretty old. You don't realize they're old. When you go to peel them, they peel real easy. And the reason they peel real easy is... I have a paper here that explains that. <laughs> Let's see, because they're a couple weeks old. Well, they're more than a couple weeks old. They're like a couple months old. And there's enough air between the membranes, and that allows the separation and the peel off the shell. So the shell will peel easier. But what happens is the room temperature of the membranes begin to separate, and the air starts to seep in between them. And it will create an air sac at the blunt end of the egg which is the the big, the big end. You want the big end. In fact, when you store point. your eggs, you should always store them with the small end down. It's just the way you're supposed to store them. I don't know why. You're supposed to do that, though. That was something that I learned a long time ago, a real long time ago. And Probably another reason that they absorb more air is they have to wash them here in the United States. So they take the off air. all the natural bloom goes in eat faster and the air can right. penetrate quicker 
And the reason their yolks are not as orange is they don't get any bugs. Even those big farms where they say we've got free range chickens, they're, they're walking around in this big huge building. They never go outside in the sunshine. Very rare do they ever, ever leave that building. Sure, they're walking around, but they're, they're not, not in cage, individual cages. They're but. not getting the sunshine. They're not finding bugs. And the ones that are, are in cages or on, sh they, they actually clip their beaks because they're so close to each other that they could hurt each other really bad. And so they clip the beak so that they can't do that. There are people that will save these hens from, because when they get to a certain age and stop laying, that they, they are then sent to the factory to be disposed of. They've still got a lot of life left in them. It's just that the production has gone down. And it's usually the leghorn hens that they, they have in these factories because they lay a white egg. And most people like a white egg. And the reason they like the white eggs is, if you ever notice when you buy or you have the fresh eggs from your chickens, if you have chickens, that sometimes there's little impurity you find inside. There might be like a, a meat spot. And with the white eggs, they, they can look through that shell. And if there's any impurities, such, which they're not going to hurt you, or protein spot. spot, it's not going to hurt you to eat it. They dispose of those eggs. So your eggs will never have that in there because they they look through they can look through the white shell where the brown shells are harder to look through. I also have a little video I've got I want to put in of my hens in the nesting box and show you what these girls try to do. Now they have six boxes that they can choose from, but they didn't choose. They only choose certain three. This is, well, there was more in here. They're out now. They were all trying, there was like two in this box, two in this box, and one in this box. But they're kind of, Emma is laying an egg, they're trying to, and Silver's trying to lay one with her. And there's Mr. Brown. You're all right, Mr. Brown, you've been walking around. Look at this. Now there's a different one in that one. And you two twins are, and Emma's still there with Silver. All right, all right, all right. And Mr. Brown, go visit with the other hen. And you'll see Mr. Brown. I brought Mr. Brown outside today. And boy, she was really trying to figure a way out of that fenced area. She actually got out of the little area I had her in. Then you could see her standing on it, looking at the roof of the of the enclosed run. She was looking up and down, up and down, like she was going to, maybe I could fly up there, maybe I can't, I don't know. But she didn't try. So then she went into the hen house, the enclosed part, and she hops up on the nesting box, and she's tapping at the plexiglass. She was tapping at that, trying to figure out, I can see your house over there. I know you can get, get to it. and But... She just was not happy in there at all. They did leave her alone pretty much, but the brown one that looked like it was going to be a rooster last year was trying to grow a rooster tail. She's still mean to her. So if I ever have a hen that has to leave, that's the hen that will go. And that's the one that was the sidekick to the rooster all the time. She's not very nice at all. The rest of them pretty much left her alone. The buffs once in a while would knock her in the head, but they do that with each other. I walked out into the field, and every time I walked, she follows, and it's like she's really attached to me. The other hens will walk kind of close, but they don't, they they won't let me touch them. I, the buffs I can pet. Well, I'm going to say goodbye. Okay. okay. You say goodbye. I will. All right. I'll mm -hmm. see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.